Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. So I was on one of the forums yesterday and I was going back and forth with a couple of guys. So um, there was some information that was not correct. So I wanted to come in early this morning, make a quick video just to clear some things up. I'm not gonna mention anybody's names. Uh, person super knowledgeable. I really respect this person as a builder and as a technician. But um, there was a mod that we came up with last year when we were having a problem with the ground zero yellow basket coax that the amplifier would actually skip um if you're using diamond audio amplifiers or sound digital evo x amplifiers if you push the speaker kind of hard and i can't even say that because in some some instances it was as little as 50 watts would make the speaker do this and then um this i guess this rta has a similar amplifier as what's in some of these Class D motorcycle amplifiers because this is exactly what it was doing. So it's playing. Then you get that. Sounds like a CD skipping. So while they were trying to find a solution for the problem, um, instead of taking back speakers that there was really nothing wrong with, we just came up with an infield solution to get the client going. Um, I can tell you right now, this solution is not authorized by Ground Zero. It will void your warranty on the speaker. Um, Ground Zero's official policy is if this happens, ship them back to speakers, they will ship you a new set. Here at the shop, we just modify the speaker. So um, do not do this. It will void your warranty. This is a solution we came up with that works for us. And you also have to remember, we use a DSP on every single build. So one of the reasons the Ground Zero can do what it does is it comes with a 12 decibel per octave crossover. Most coaxes on the market come with a first order, which means one single device, second order is 12 dB, first order is 6 dB. So it makes this a second order, 12 dB. It has a capacitor and an inductor coil. So the inductor coils ran in parallel with the six and a half. The capacitors ran in series with the tweeter. So this creates a steeper slope, which is more protection for the tweeter, which it needs because this speaker handles a lot of more mid bass than a lot of the six and a on the market. So we've noticed that the inductor coil drops the impedance just a little bit low and causes the amplifier to do what you just heard. So what we were doing is converting it to a regular first order 6 dB proctive by removing the coil. The coil is ran in parallel. So if you remove the coil, the tweeter will still play because this tweeter still runs in series with the capacitor. This is where we got into the debate yesterday and the person said that if you remove the coil, the tweeter doesn't play at all and then this just becomes a regular mid bass driver with no tweeter, it's no longer a coax. That's not true, and I'm gonna show you now. So while the speaker's playing, I have the microphone above the speaker. So this is tweeter frequency here, and this is mid-range, mid-bass. So you can tell the tweeter's playing. See that? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove just the black part, the coil. I'm just gonna clip both ends. I'm not gonna do anything else to the speaker. And what you should see on the screen is the tweeter still plays, but it should play a little bit louder because it's got less protection. Then since we wanted to run a DSP, we've just removed a level of protection from the tweeter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside the DSP and we're gonna create a shelf filter from let's say 5,000 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz and reduce in the EQ the output of the tweeter. We're gonna put back the protection that we just removed. So we're gonna remove 6 dB of protection. Then we're gonna go inside the DSP and use an EQ we're gonna add back that 6 dB of protection. So now the speaker still protected, tweeter still protected, and it no longer causes the amp to skip like that. Remember, if you do this, you will avoid the warranty on the speaker. This is not authorized by Ground Zero. They don't like that I do this, that I don't like that I talk about this, but uh.
Okay, I've only removed the coil from the circuit. As you can see, the tweeter is still playing. As you can see, I've only removed the coil from the circuit. As you can see, the tweeter is still playing. I've only removed the coil from the circuit. As you can see, the tweeter is still playing. Watch. There it is. So now I'm going to go a step further. I'm going to cut the cap off the circuit and you're going to see the tweeter is going to stop playing. No more tweeter. So if you remove the coil, the tweeter still plays. If you remove the cap, the tweeter stops playing. See that? So I'm just going to jump the tweeter back in. See it playing? Not playing. Playing? Not playing. Let me just get you a diagram of what a 12 decibel per octave passive crossover looks like so you can see what we just did. Okay, here's the most simple illustration that I could find. So, first order, 6 dB per octave. Second order, 12 dB per octave. Third order, 3 dB. So, 18 dB per octave. So, as you could see on the graph, sixth order. I'm, I'm sorry, first order, 6 dB, least amount of protection, allows the most, more of the base to pass through. Then we have a 12, then we have an 18. So more base, less base, even less base. So as you add the components, that's what makes it a first, second, and third order. One component makes it a first order. Two components makes it a second order. Three components, one, two, three, makes it a third order. So first order, 6 dB per octave. So this is tweeter frequency, this is base frequency. So in the first order, you can see it allows most of the base through. That's why when they add a capacitor, they have to start really high, like 10K. That way, when you get to this point, it's 5K and doesn't destroy the tweeter. So as you do a second order, you can increase the value and get a... So let's say this is 10K, this could be 5K, and this could be 7K, because you don't need such a high value since it's a third order, it's offering more protection, it starts cutting off sooner, it starts dropping off sooner. This one starts dropping here, this one starts dropping here, this one starts dropping here. So for for reference, just to make the math easy, let's say that this is a 10,000 hertz cutoff point, this is a 5,000 hertz cutoff point, uh, 7,000 hertz cutoff point, and this is a 5,000 hertz cut cutoff point. So with the higher cutoff point since there's less protection. So you start at 10K, end up at around five. So you start at 7K, end up at around five. Start at 5K, end up at around four or five or six. So just to make the math easy. So as you can see, the capacitor is wired in series with the tweeter. So we have our positive, our negative. We have signal going through. If you remove the capacitor, the tweeter doesn't play. But this is what comes on the ground zero yellow basket coax. 
we have an inductor coil ran in parallel, so it's across the positive and the negative, and we have our capacitor, so it's this plus this. So we have signal going through the positive, signal going through the negative, and the tweeter place. If we remove the inductor coil, we now convert this from a second order to a first order, and the tweeter still plays because we still have signal here and here. We've just removed this section right here. So I've proved it to you in the video where we started here. I removed this from the circuit, converted it to this, and the tweeter still played. Then to verify that the tweeter is playing, I went ahead and I cut the output of the capacitor here and the tweeter stopped playing. It's simple, simple math, simple physics. This is the way a passive crossover network works. So the ground zero, as it ships, ships like this. If you have a skipping problem, you can either ship the speaker back to ground zero, which is what we recommend, that way you still have your warranty intact, or you can remove the inductor coil, which we don't recommend doing. Ground zero frowns upon this and doesn't want you to do it, but it saves, if you're willing to void your warranty, it saves you from being without a speaker. And then you can even test it too. You can cut the coil just on one side, and if it doesn't fix the problem, just solder it back. But this, this is what we do, this is why we do it, this is why it works. I hope this helps.